Hello, in this video we're going to do utility maximization when we have concave and difference curves. So here's a utility function that will give us concave and difference curves, concave to the origin. We got good x and good y. Here is our budget constraint. We have $10 of income. The price of good x is 1. The price of good y is 1. Uh, if we take this constraint and solve it for y, y equals 10 minus x. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to substitute this constraint back into the utility function in order to do my utility maximization. So here we got the utility function just expressed as a function of good x. After Again, after we made our substitution in for y squared, we put in 10 minus x. So we're going to just take the derivative of the utility function with respect to good x. The uh, derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of this last term, we're going to bring down the 2 over here in front. And then it's going to be 2 minus 1 in the exponent. And then we have to take the derivative of what's inside here, which is going to just be minus 1. And that's multiplied throughout what we have here in parentheses. Simplifying. So simplifying, uh, we got 2 minus 1. That's where this minus 2 is coming from. Simplifying some more, we get this. And so here is the derivative of the utility function with respect to x. In order for a maximization, we're going to set this derivative equal to 0. So 4x minus 20 equals 0. x equals 5. Plugging this 5 back into our constraint, y equals 5. If we're to evaluate the utility function at x equals 5, y equals 5, we'll get 25 plus 25, or 50. One thing we'll notice here that this outcome is not a maximum. The second derivative, if we were to take the derivative of 4x minus 20, uh, we just get 4, and that is not less than 0, so we're not at a maximum. Condition for a maximum is that the second order condition be negative. So we need to check for a corner solution. So from the constraint right here, set y equal to 0 and solve for x. If you do that, if y is 0, x is 10. Plug those results into our utility function, x of 10 and y is 0. And we get a utility of 100, which is much greater than what we've found over here. Uh, we can also check the corner solution uh, if x equals 0. If x equals 0, y will equal 10. And we plug that into our utility function. And we get utility equals 100. So in either case, uh, this consumer in this setup will either consume nothing but good x, in that case 10 units of good x, or nothing but good y, or 10 units of good y. Let's do another example, same type of utility function. Here I'm going to specify the constraint as follows, 10 equals x plus 2y. So here the price of good y is $2, price of good x is $1. We're going to solve for good y from this constraint and make our substitution into the utility function. And as before, we're just going to maximize this uh, by taking the derivative and setting that, simplifying and setting that derivative equal to zero. So here x will equal two and y will equal five minus 0.5 times two or y will equal four. At this consumption level, utility is four plus 16 or 20. So here again, we're going to check the second order condition, taking the second derivative of the utility function with respect to x. Just this result right here, 2.5x minus 5. So the derivative of that is 2.5. That is positive, so we're not at a maximum. So we need to check corner solutions. So let's set y equal to 0. If y equals 0, we solve for x. And x will equal 10. Plugging that into the utility function, we get a higher level of utility. This is, you know, this is on the budget constraint, and it gives us a higher level utility than this 
tangency condition that we found over here. Let's check another corner solution. Let's set x equal to 0 and solve for y. So with this constraint, x equals 0, solving for y, you're going to get 10 divided by 2, or y equals 5. Plugging that into the utility function, uh, this is smaller than in our first case over here. So our utility maximizing choice would be this corner solution where the consumer buys 10 units of x at $1 piece and doesn't buy anything of good y. Let's look at this last example graphically. All right, so here's a graph of our last example. The red line, this red straight line, is the budget constraint. And what we first did, uh, we found where the concave and difference curve was tangent to our budget constraint. And we found y was 4 and x was 2. And that gave us a utility of 20. So notice we could get on a higher indifference curve and still be at a point on the budget constraint. So if we increase the uh, indifference curve a little bit in the northeasterly direction, we could be consuming right here where y equals 5 and x equals 0. Uh, given our utility function is x squared plus y squared, that would give us a utility of 25. Uh, but we can do better than that. We can even get on a higher indifference curve that touches our budget constraint and that would be at this corner point over here where x is 10 and y is 0. When x is 10 we get a utility of 100. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.